وقل رب زدني علما أعوذ بالله السميع العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا As we promised the khutbah of Utbah ibn Ghazwan radiyallahu anhu ardah Utbah ibn Ghazwan was one of the great companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the first among the seven to become Muslim or among the first seven with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was also locked with him in the uh, in the shi'b of Abu Talib in the garden of Abu Talib during the three year of uh, the boycotting that the disbelievers had against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and Utbah ibn Ghazwan subhanallah he defeated the uh, the Persian empire with only 600 soldiers and Umar sent them and Umar wanted to choose him as a governor to Al-Basra but subhanallah he was among those people who abandoned dunya and never wanted anything from this life so when Umar sent them to Al-Basra he rejected the first time then Umar radiallahu anhu ardah encouraged him and told him you should do it and we're looking for people like you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested me with this khilafah with this leadership of the Muslims and you should and you appointed me you should help me with this struggle so he sent them to Al-Basra and he gave his famous khutbah that uh, Khalid ibn Umayr al-Adawi said Khatabana Utbah ibn Ghazwan that Utbah ibn Ghazwan gave this great khutbah as a reminder when he became the governor of Al-Basra he said ayyuhan nas إن الدنيا قد آذنت بصرم وولت حذاء ولم يبق منها إلا صبابة كصبابة الإناء يتصابها صاحبها وإنكم منتقلون عنها إلى دار لا زوال لها فانتقلوا بخير ما بحضرتكم. So he said the first thing he said this دنيا إن الدنيا آذنت بصرم يعني بانقطاع he said that this دنيا will be very soon cut off. يعني there will come the ending of this life. وَوَلَّتْ حُذَّاءَ And it's moving very fast. It's moving very quick. And we remember the nations who came before you and those who spend luxury and life before you. What happened to them? Dunya have passed by them very quickly. And the only thing that is left of this life to enjoy is like what is left in a dish for someone to drink or to eat. And after they drink and eat, it will be over. So you should prepare yourself for the life, the eternal life that comes afterward. And you should prepare the best of what you have to return to that life. The best of what you have from your ibadah, the best of what you have from your adhkar, the best of what you have from your sadaqah, the best of what you have from your salah, the best of what you have from silatul arham, you know, uh, connect ties with kingship, the best of what you have with spending money in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best of what you could come up with. فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ ذُكِرَ لَنَا He said it was mentioned to us, meaning by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّهُ قَدْ ذُكِرَ لَنَا أَنَّ الْحَجَرَ يُلْقَى بِهِ مِنْ شَفِيرِ جَهَنَّمَ فَلَا يَصِلُ إِلَىٰ قَعْرِهَا إِلَّا بَعْدَ سَبْعِينَ عَامًا He said we were told, you know, to, to give them the advice and the warning of this life and the attachment that people have to this life. He said we were told that a rock will be throwing in hellfire. Meaning by the Prophet ﷺ, they were told, and there's a hadith that mentions that when Rasulullah was sitting with the Sahaba and they heard the sound, you know, shaking sound. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, what is this? He said, that is a rock that is thrown in fire for 70 years. It only reached the bottom of fire today. Can you imagine this rock is traveling, you know, was thrown into a fire for 70 years. Yani the entire life of the Prophet ﷺ was 63 years. 64. That means that the rock was thrown in fire before even the birth of the Prophet sallallahu It took 70 years. So he said, we were told that Rasulullah, we were told that the rock will be thrown into hellfire and it will take 70 years to reach the bottom. And I swear by Allah that this fire will be packed. Can you imagine fire will be completely packed? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلِ امْتَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ When the day comes where Allah will say to the hellfire, have you been filled yet? Are you full yet? And Jahannam will say to Allah, I want more, I want more. It will be filled. Can you imagine 
Adam alayhi salam saw, Allah told him, take from hellfire, take from your generation, your offspring, the people of hellfire. He said, how much should I take? He says, from every thousand, 999 to hellfire and one person to Jannah. Ya Allah, the majority of people today on earth don't worship Allah. Out of 8 billion, about 1.7, 1.8 uh, billion Muslims, you know, if we count everybody, yeah, Muslims, you know. Can you imagine this? From a thousand people, 999 will be in hellfire. So the Sahaba were very scared. They said, Ya Rasulullah, this is a lot. He said, one from you and 999 from Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, alhamdulillah. So Utbah ibn, ibn Ghazwan radiallahu anhu wa is saying to the, to the people, he says, this life will run by very fast, this life will, will finish, you know, will, will be gone, and there is an in, eternal life that is coming afterward, you should prepare yourself for it, because we have heard that the rock will be thrown in fire, and it will take 70 years to reach the bottom of, of that fire. And wallahi, the day will come where this fire will be packed, well, this fire, hellfire will be packed, will be full. Afa ajibtum? Are you surprised of what I'm saying? Like I, he said to them, like you, you look surprised. This is affirmed. وَقَدْ ذُكِرَ لَنَا أَنَّ مَصَارِيعًا مِنْ مَصَارِيعِ الْجَنَّةِ بَيْنَهُمَا أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً وَلَيَأْتِيَنَّ عَلَيْهِ يَوْمٌ وَهُوَ كَظِيظٌ مِنَ الزَّحَامِ He said, and we were told also by the Prophet ﷺ that between the doors of paradise, it will be 40 years. It will take a person who is riding a running horse 40 years to go from one edge to the other. This is how one door of Jannah. The width of that is a 40 years of running, of traveling, of you know, on a speeding horse. It will take 40 years to reach how big is that Jannah. And it will come a day where this also will be very crowded. وَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتُنِي سَابِعَ سَبْعَةٍ مَعَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمُ And I was seen among the first seven with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. مَا لَنَا طَعَامٌ إِلَّا وَرَقَ الشَّجَرِ We only had food, the leaves of the trees. Remember we talked about in this episode that you could see at the, uh, on the top, is the, the struggle of the companions with Rasulullah and the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Shi'ab of Abu Talib. He said, we were among seven. We were among seven with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We couldn't find food to feed our hunger except the leaves of the trees. And we used to eat them. وَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتُنِي وَمَعِيَ جُبَّةٌ قَسَمْتُهَا نِصْفَيْنِ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ سَعْدِ بْنِ مَالِكِ Sa'd ibn Abu Qas. He said, I only had a garment on me and I, you know, I cut it to two pieces so I could cover myself and give the other half to Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas to cover himself. This is dunya. This is the dunya we are fighting for. This is the hardship of the Sahaba, Rudwanullah alayhim, the, the struggle of the companions who delivered to us this beautiful religion that we today you know, many of us have abandoned, many of us have left their path and their way. And he said that our throat were injured out of hunger, our, our thirst. He said, look at the, the karam, the, 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 look at how dunya changes, look at how life changes, that today, each and every one of those seven people who were with Rasulullah who were locked, you know, boycotted, no food, no water, dying out of thirst, you know, throat being injured, stomach is empty. He said, among those seven today, every one of them is, one of, is a governor upon a city. What have they lost? Allah blessed them in this life before the hereafter. He said, look at us today, we are all governors. We are now in a lead. We are now in control after we were in that situation. Yeah, that's how life is. That's why when the Sahabi came, Hadith al-Khabbab when he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he was wearing his garment, you know, in the shade of al-Ka'bah, he said, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah for victory. Why don't you make dua for us? Look at us. We're tortured. We're being, you know, uh, you know, harshly treated. We've been injured. We've been locked in our houses. Some of us are being burned. Some of us is in the middle of the desert. Make dua for us. And what did the Prophet ﷺ say? 
He said there are, there are people who came before you who went through more than you. Some of them will be buried alive in the hole. Some of them will be iron, you know, with a comb of iron, uh, removing their flush from their bones. Uh, some of them will be cut, split with the, uh, 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 split to two halves. And they wouldn't leave their religion. Wallahi, there will come a time where you'll be traveling from Sana'a to Hadramaut. This religion will spread. And this, this was most, most of the dangerous area to travel, valley, between Sana'a in Yemen, now the capital, to Hadramaut. Most dangerous place to travel. He said there will come a time where Islam will spread and security will spread that you will be traveling fearing none but Allah and the wolf upon your sheep. And it did happen and they did see it. The promise of Allah is there. So Udba ibn Ghazwan is trying to tell them what? That look what we have lost. We haven't lost anything of dunya. We sacrifice our life. We sacrifice few years. We sacrifice with struggle. But today we are all governors. We're all governors. We're all governors that are leading other people. He's reminding them of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he ended his khutbah by saying, وَإِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنْ أَكُونَ فِي نَفْسِي عَظِيمًا وَعِنْدَ اللَّهِ صَغِيرًا This is the humbleness of the Sahaba. He said, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ I seek refuge in Allah that I look at myself or honor who I am or consider myself to be great and I am insignificant in the sighting of Allah. We today as Muslims are so happy. We are Muslims. We're getting Jannah. You know, we, who, who else is better than us? Look at this great companion. This companion of Rasulullah who was among the seven, first seven on earth to be believers. He's saying what? He said, أعوذ بالله that I look at myself and consider myself to be great of what I have done or I did. And Allah looks at me as, as, and sees me as insignificant, as very little. أعوذ بالله من that. The point is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know what happened to that companion? Read his story, Udba ibn Ghazwan. This is beautiful khutbah narrated by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. You could look at it. Imam Muslim in the Sahih narrated the entire khutbah. Look at it again and learn the lessons of this dunya and the reality of this dunya and the struggle of this dunya. It, is, it will run by you very fast. Yansarim, it will disappear. It will be cut off. It will just go away very quickly and you won't remember anything by a dip in paradise. When you go to Jannah, you'll forget everything. On the other hand, the Prophet ﷺ said, a dip in hellfire will make people forget the pleasure of this life. And Umar that's why he chose Utbah ibn Ghazwan to be the leader of Al-Basra. And when he went to Hajj and went to Umar and said, can you please now accept my resignation? I don't want to be an Amir. I don't want to be a leader no more. I want to return to Allah the way I'm at. And Umar said, well, yeah, going back. You know what he did? He took his camel or his horse and he made dua. He said, Ya Allah, if you want good for me and it's my time, please take my soul away. And he died, radiallahu anhu, Allah, before he got to be a governor again. They were not attached to dunya, brothers and sisters. They were attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the religion of Allah, they defended and honored. Look what he did in Badr, look what he did in Uhud, look what, how he defeated only with 600 soldiers. 600 soldiers with very light weapon, the Persian Empire. Radiallahu anhu Allah. And Umar said, I know who to send to defeat those people. I have somebody. And he chose him, radiallahu anhu Allah. With all of that, he didn't like to be a governor. He didn't want power. He didn't want the chair. He didn't want to fight for it. Well, I guess the attachment of dunya is the, what the Prophet ﷺ warned us from, that it will come a time where our weakness will be even more because we are fearing death, meaning the return of Allah, and we are attached to this life. Our heart is attached to this dunya. May Allah Taala give us the benefit of this beautiful khutbah, make us among those who follow the benefit of it and learn from the companions of Rasulullah who were taught by the greatest of all, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Jazakum Allah khayran. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.